Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Tree by the Bay. It's a 5x5 five five toneless interpretation of a New Zealand beach scene. I say New Zealand beach scene because we've got a little bit of ocean there a little cove for a little bay and this tree this type of tree is called a pahutakawa and they grow up here in the north of New Zealand they don't grow everywhere in New Zealand um, they like a certain type of climate they like to be by the water you see them on the beaches here and it's one of the things that makes our beaches so incredibly beautiful is that you have these trees growing right up on the edge of the beach and they are such beautiful trees. They're not easy to paint, though, I will say. And uh, I've had this bit of... Uh, <clears throat> I had the bit of reference I painted. I, I based this painting on for quite a while, but really just didn't have the uh, joie de vie, you know, the, 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 the spark to pull it off. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I try a lot of times to avoid strong diagonals in my paintings, but this is an exception to that. And, you know, let's face it, what good's a rule if you don't make some exceptions, you know? And I do think this works uh, mostly because of the stronger shadow emphasis of the tree. It's, you know, right up there in the foreground, so we're going to be pretty easy going with most anything that's going on behind that, since that's a strong anchoring focal. Um, so I had this bit of reference and I had an idea that I'd like to interpret it as a sunset with a kind of yellow into blue thing. And, uh, I always like to pull that off because it's so rich and this is one of the things about tonalism is that one of the reasons it occurs in the studio is that you could observe the sliding effect in nature but it's going to last about at most 10 to 15 minutes and then the sky well you've, we've all been on the beach at sunset you know the sky is changing 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 awesome to photograph that and document that uh, much harder to paint it <laughs> anyway that's what i went after here and uh Interestingly, too, like I haven't done a lot with this 5x5 five five size lately. I was really, really into it as a size uh, 2013, 2014. Uh, but since since that time, basically, if I'm going to get into a real little painting, I've been doing like 3.5 by 3.5. Or um, I haven't really even done that many squares lately. I do think the square format is fascinating and there's a very interesting history of various different landscape painters that have used that format. George Ness being one of them. Uh, Will, uh, I think his name's William Metcalf or Willard Metcalf, American Impressionist painter. If you're not familiar with him, look, at, look up his work. He did a lot of squares and he's one of the best landscape painters that ever lived. You won't see me doing uh, many studies after his stuff since it's pretty much impressionism but i have so much respect for his work uh, it's not even funny and he was doing impression american impressionism at that time when there was a lot of crossover between people working in a toneless they might do one painting in the toneless vein and the next painting in an impressionist vein it's it's always good to keep in mind that uh, it's art historians that create a lot of these distinctions and quote unquote schools when at the end of the day, I mean, you're really, you're a painter, you're making a painting, you're working in the studio or you're working outdoors. A lot of times what determines whether the painting is impressionist or not, it might just be that simple distinction. You're working indoors, you're gonna do a lot of things. Um, there's a heck of a lot of impressionists that like to start their paintings outdoors and then finish them in the studio. They like that fresh sort of quality you get from the, uh, you know, the plein air approach. Uh, 
that for me doesn't work. And I did a bit of plein air work in California when I was there, and I did some out here. And I, I just find that because this is an island that um, the weather is so changeable here. I mean, you leave the house, it's a nice day, and then an hour later you see storm clouds coming in, and then an hour hour after that it's a nice day again, or it's overcast where it was sunny. Or it just moves around a lot, and. Uh, I like the control aspect. Also, a lot of what I'm trying to communicate, say, with a scene like this, it's a sunset. Uh, how am I going to do that as a plein air painting? I have to paint pretty small and pretty fast. So maybe use a, a half inch brush on the board this size, you know, just get the notes down. And plenty of great artists have done that, so I'm not dissing that. But for me, I like to have the control of working in the studio, taking my time and getting the effects that I'm after. Yeah. Uh, and so actually getting back into like the five by five size, I uh, started working at size because one of the things I was trying to do is sort of like try to do a plein air in the studio. So I would do a small study prior to doing a larger painting. Um, with that sort of plein air type approach. In other words, I took my time. Uh, well, I didn't take my time. I worked very quickly. Um, this one we're doing today, this is not a study. I'm taking my time on this. I'm working everything out. And um, heck, I could have made a painting twice this size in the same amount of time, to be honest. But uh, I had this board prepped from uh, one of my first uh, forays into doing the uh, system of texturizing I use on my boards now and uh, what happens is I, I work my way through all of the boards that I've texturized I start looking around and I go okay five by five good you're up and uh, that's actually this painting is a, it's a very odd little painting for me because it fell in between different photography sessions it was like I would just kind of, uh, I, I, I kind of popped it in and, and did it and uh, it really wasn't even in the flow of the other stuff I was doing in the studio at that time. So it's, it's a unique little painting and I um, think I'm going to, I've been, I, actually that's the other thing I want to get into today. I've been a little more active with my uh, social media and my website. Um, if you've been to the store on my site and seen there hasn't been many changes, I'm getting into that and changing that. One of the things I want to try and do is kind of get get things up in the store around the same time that I'm putting out the YouTube videos. So if you see if you see something like this, you go, wow, that's really cool. I think that's awesome. Uh, you can pop over to my website, look at the uh, corresponding blog post and I'm going to try to more and more get these things up in the store unless you know they're in a gallery or something in which case I wouldn't be able to do that but this painting I believe I still have in the studio and uh, be great pop it in the store I'll sell it for a reasonable price out of my store and uh, just so you know anything in my store shipping's included so you don't have to worry about the fact that I'm here in the uh, ass crack of the planet. <laughs> yeah, and shipping's not too cheap out of here. Let me tell you, we're an island, and we're New Zealand is one of the most isolated places on the planet. And uh, the, for especially considering how much civilization we have here, it's pretty much a straight up Western country. Uh, the only other place that might be just a little more isolated is Hawaii. Same sort of story. Um, you're very interesting when you go to Hawaii. That you know, me being an American, you know, it's a it's a, a Polynesian island, uh, but it has an American culture. It has all the American shops there. It's really, really interesting. Uh, now, what you see me doing there is a bit of scumbling in the painting. And what I'm doing is to really want to set those mountains in the back further back and I'm going to follow up a little later on with a bit of glazing because um, so that would almost that would constitute a third color pass so you're looking at a second color pass right now because I can't scumble on a wet painting <laughs> you, you can't glaze either you've got to do that over a dry painting in case you didn't know that 
uh, if you haven't played with scumbling, scumbling, especially on texture, can be kind of tricky because a lot of the um, so scumbling, uh, if you don't know, is when you take uh, opaque or semi-opaque paint and you rub it over a portion of your painting to kind of change it. You can see what it did to this painting. It took that shapes of those mountains and really threw them in the distance. So the idea here is to introduce sort of a haze. And uh, it's a great effect for that because let's face it, I mean, it's the same sort of thing as haze. You're introducing a layer in between what was painted before and what is uh, gonna be uh, perceived now. So just like when you have haze in the air between you and a distant object. So very, very potent for that. Glazing is very potent at a, well, you're gonna see actually, if you do go to my um, corresponding blog, you can get a good, image, a good look at this image uh, or you would have seen it at the very beginning of the video and there's always one at the very end. But you'll notice that those seem a lot more yellow than what you're looking at right now, even though the painting is nearly complete. And what you'll see at the very end of the video, and you, if you blink, you'll miss it. You'll see me kind of rub my hand over the, uh, the board and then you'll see everything looks a lot more yellow. That's glazing. Oh, by the way, if you haven't clicked like, please do, because it tells YouTube that people like this video and when people are looking at other videos that are similar, uh, YouTube goes, well, geez, maybe they'll like this too, because they want to keep you on YouTube watching videos. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And new subscribers, thank you so much for joining my channel. I will uh, keep the content coming and uh, I post twice a week and uh, share my painting process pretty thoroughly. Um, I try to make things a little bit educational, but I don't always do that. Um, I will say there's always some sort of tips or insights pertaining to painting in every video. So you do want to kind of stick with the entire video. I don't really um, get into remedial things. There's other channels I think that are better for that. Um, but if you're an uh, intermediate to advanced painter, uh, well, if you're advanced, you're looking to get better, I, you know. Um, we all learn from each other, right? This is one of the reasons I do the master studies. But uh, there's always insights. And if you ever do have a question, um, I'm happy to help. I'm very open with my process and what I do. Uh, you can ask in the comments uh, or you can uh, go to my site and send me an email. And lots of people take advantage of that. And uh, I usually get back to people right away. Um, I like to be helpful and I really respect people that, uh, you know, take the time to engage in create, create, creating art. And this is uh, one of the reasons I try to help people out, you know. I, I could have, um, well, don't think I didn't think about just putting these on DVDs and trying to sell these videos in a longer format. And that day may come, I don't know. but. Meanwhile, you can go check out this little painting on my blog. And like I said, I'm gonna roll this out at the store too, even if it means I've gotta put up the video a little later. So go check it out. And uh, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I'll be back over the weekend with a past master. I've got some pretty good stuff coming up here. And uh, real excited about that but working on past masters in the studio too so i'm in past master mode anyway until i see you at the next video do me a favor please take good care of yourself and your family your loved ones all your friends and stay out of trouble